For 16 months, from 1970 to 1973, the Russians used a remote guidance system on Earth to operate two small rovers, which traveled nearly 31 miles over the surface of the moon. This feat was one of the greatest technological achievements in the history of the USSR. Designed in utmost secrecy in Soviet laboratories and eclipsed by the triumphant success of the Apollo mission, the Lunokhod adventure remains virtually unknown to the public. The opening of the Soviet space archives and the work of the Spirit and Opportunity rovers on Mars have cast a new light on this tremendous odyssey. Here is the story of this mysterious lunar device and the adventure of the scientists who contributed to the conquest of the moon. The Soviet called their lunar rover the Lunokhod. For many years, its story remained secret. I would say that most people, not just in the United States, but in the world, don't know of the Russian accomplishments on the moon with the automated lunar sample return and the uh, lunokhods. The lunokhod, lunar vehicle in Russian, is a child of the 60s, the era when the USSR leaped into the competition with the United States in the race for space. This was a time when communism seemed triumphant, when the first satellite was called Sputnik, and the first man to orbit the Earth was named Gagarin. A period when the first cosmonaut to make a spacewalk was Soviet, when technology was the battleground of the Cold War. On May 25, 1961, President Kennedy told Americans that a U.S. astronaut would walk on the moon before the end of the decade. Nikita Khrushchev immediately took up the challenge. The race for the moon was on. A new device appeared on the Lunokhod, a lid the inventors nicknamed the frying pan, which had a solar panel on the underside. This was a crucial invention. During the two weeks of the lunar day, the unfolded lid would provide energy to the drive wheels and to the instruments inside the compartment. During the two weeks of the lunar night, the lid would close to protect the rover from the cold. But with temperatures of minus 275 degrees Fahrenheit, no one could be certain it would be enough. A polonium-210 radioactive power source, which powered a generator, was fitted to the back of the lunokhod. During the lunar night, the heat shield closed and the generator heated the gas contained in the insulated and pressurized compartment. To withstand the temperatures of the lunar day, which could reach 320 degrees Fahrenheit, the lunokhod was protected by a ventilation system. A gas circulated in the compartment when the electrical equipment generated too much heat. The heat was then discharged outside via a thermal exchange unit. At each stage, Babakin's group ran meticulous tests on these innovations. Very soon, the small rover would be ready to drive on the moon. At 3.44 p.m., the Proton rocket took off. A new Lunokhod was aboard. At an altitude of 50 miles, the Proton rocket reached the speed required to orbit the Earth. After several engine thrusts, it launched the Luna 17 spacecraft, which gradually climbed free of the Earth's gravitational pull. It took four and a half days to travel the distance from the Earth to the moon. The entire program was secret. Only the estimated lunar landing date wasn't. Because many astronomers were awaiting this event in observatories. But as soon as the lunar cord landed on the moon, the secret behind the project was fully revealed. The lunar landing site had been carefully selected. After orbiting the moon for 48 hours, Lunokhod 1 
started its historic descent. On November 17, 1970, Luna 17 made a soft landing in the Sea of Rains and settled on the lunar surface at a four degree angle. I experienced this moment as an amazing burst of emotion. When the landing platform touched down on the moon, it was tremendous. The flight engineer shouted, the lunar cod has landed on the surface of the Earth. He quickly corrected himself, the moon. Everyone burst into applause. The landing ramp was deployed. The lunar surface stretched ahead of the lunar cod wheels. In Leningrad, Alexander Kamerjan had just undergone serious surgery. One of the fathers of the small rover followed its first steps from his hospital bed. I was in the room with Kamerjan, and my eyes filled with tears. It was a total triumph. We'd put so much energy into it. Personally, I'd not taken a vacation in three years. The Simferopol Space Center in Crimea gave the order to deploy the helical antenna and open the lid of the solar panel. There were no Soviet cosmonauts on the moon, but instead a small, perfectly crafted rover which responded to orders from the distant USSR. Lunokhod, initially scheduled by its designers to run for 90 days, continued for nearly 11 months traveling nearly seven miles. It successfully accomplished all the planned scientific tasks and transmitted more than 20,000 images of the lunar surface, 500 tests and complete analysis of soil samples. This was the greatest achievement in Soviet astronautics. The chassis could have operated for a longer time, but the nuclear resources for heating the internal components of the lunar cod were used up. The lunar cod stopped functioning. As my father used to say, it simply died a natural death. By late 1972, the Lavashkin Institute had constructed a second lunar cod. The new vehicle carried more scientific equipment than its predecessor. The navigation cameras were mounted higher for a better view of the lunar surface. The primary goal of this mission was to determine, using a French-made laser corner reflector, the distance between the moon and the Earth to within three meters. A joint experiment was conducted by Soviet and French specialists. Laser ranging devices were installed on the large telescope in the Crimea Astrophysics Observatory, which is important for the study of the Earth's structure. January 1973, a new success for the USSR. Luna 21 soft landed in the Sea of Serenity with its payload, Lunokhod 2. The aim of the Franco-Russian laser ranging measurements was to help predict volcanic activity and earthquakes and to study continental drift. On May 9, 1973, Lunokhod 2 set a new record, traveling 23 miles. Then, after four months, it stopped, like the earlier model, and shut down for eternity. By operating two rovers on the moon, the Soviet engineers did better than avoiding a humiliating defeat for their country at the hands of the United States. They produced a success which was rehashed by Soviet propaganda for years. Yet, these men remained in the shadows for a very long time until history finally remembered them.